Hey, I'm Matthew Jude, and whether you're new to the hobby or a lifelong gamer, seems there's always another game on the shelf waiting to be discovered. In this series, we cover 10 games that caught our eye this month, both new and old, that we couldn't let go overlooked. These are this month's top 10 underdog games. Welcome to this month's list of underdogs. Do you know, it's just that I've realised calling this a list of underdog games isn't entirely accurate. An underdog has the odds stacked against it. But we're here, we're just highlighting games that we really wanted to give some more attention to. Eh, it'll be alright. Our first game this month is... Nope, it's going to keep on bothering me. It's just simply not an accurate title. I can do better. Though now I've done it, I can feel the existential dread coming on. While I have this mild crisis, here's Chaz with this episode's first sponsor. Thanks, Matthew. You know, as a component proponent myself, I'm excited to present a big holiday sale from board game component upgrade specialist Top Shelf Gamer. Through December 14th, Watch It Played viewers will receive 20% off of hundreds of Top Shelf Gamers tabletop upgrades simply by entering the coupon code Watch It Played 2020, all one word, during checkout. Need a holiday gift for a gamer in your life, even if that gamer is you or me? I think that you and I are close enough to be on gift-giving terms. You're in luck, because Top Shelf Gamer carries the perfect board game upgrades for all of our favorite games. Deluxe resin and metal tokens, beautiful inserts, detailed metal coins, and premium card sleeves, all of which are on sale at Top Shelf Gamer right now. Top Shelf Gamer's 20% off sale technically ends on November 30th. But, as a special gift just for Watch It Play viewers, you will continue to receive this 20% discount all the way through December 14th simply by entering the coupon code WATCHITPLAYED2020, all one word, during checkout. So, for a great deal, go check out their website, and then check out on their website. Now, on to the first game on whatever this list should be called. Escape the Room, The Cursed Dollhouse from Think Fun. Because nothing says fun like a cursed doll. In Escape the Room, The Cursed Dollhouse, players explore a mysterious three-dimensional dollhouse, solving puzzles and gaining the clues they will need in order to escape. There are five rooms, each containing physical objects to investigate and multiple puzzles to solve, designed to keep players engaged through an estimated two-hour game length. This entry in the Escape Room series ups the ante with puzzles that are intended to be at a higher difficulty and more challenging to solve, with a longer playtime and a unique three-dimensional table presence that aims to better replicate the traditional Escape Room experience. It's a spooky mystery to solve, just in time for Halloween, because this game was released several weeks ago, just in time to hit your gaming table on Halloween. It, it might even have been back in September, but just in time to hit your gaming table in time for Labor Day doesn't quite have the same ring to it. The next game that matched our list's loosely established canine themed criteria this month is Super Skill Pinball 4K, designed by Jeff Engelstein and published by WizKids. Super Skill Pinball 4K aims to bring the classic arcade pinball experience to tabletop using roll and write mechanisms. Players choose one of four unique tables to play, then get the pinballs bouncing with the roll of the dice. Selecting a dice combination will blast the pinball to a bumper or a spinner or target one level below with a matching number. And once the ball reaches the table's lowest level, flick a flipper to rocket it right back up to the top. Playing well unlocks bonuses like multi-ball, score multipliers, and achieves the highest score. Not playing well causes the moon to crash into the sun. But regardless of whether losing this game will cause a lunar catastrophe, adapting the frenetic pinball experience into a tabletop dice roller makes this one of our underdogs this month. <sighs> Come on, Matthew. Pinball's been a beloved pastime for literally decades. Apart from that time it got outlawed. I recommend looking that nonsense up. It just doesn't feel right to refer to something pinball related as an underdog. This is, this is gonna need a total rethink. Chaz, are you still there? Oh, I'm late to pick Rodney up from oboe practice, so... So, yeah, sure. I have all the time you need. While I work on this list title, would you have time to cover our next game, Polynesia? Sure, but that's a game? I thought Polynesia was what happened when a group of people all forgot something at the same time. 
Or perhaps you mean the nautical-themed route-building game from Ludnova. In Polynesia, players must save their tribe members from the dangers of an imminent volcanic eruption by evacuating them to various islands, each of which earns the player's people's precious protection and piles of points. Now, additionally, players must try to reach the objectives established by tide cards, which will vary from one game to another. To succeed, players must collect resources in the form of fish and shells, explore new sea routes, use the routes of other players, and sail from one island to another. Polynesia is played in rounds, and at the end of the round, the player that's the most successful at protecting their population will be appointed as the supreme chief of the Polynesian tribal group. So Matthew, it sounds like you're looking for a better title for this monthly batch of games to use, rather than, rather than underdogs? Yeah, actually, do you have any ideas? Well, uh, these are games that are noteworthy, while not necessarily being, you know, the hotness. So how about the notness? Yeah, that's actually somehow worse than underdogs, though, I feel like. Well, uh, what about the gleefully gathered gusto gaining games? No, if I'm going to have to say it a bunch of times, I'd rather it wasn't an elaborate tongue twister. Yeah, oh, boardroom? Because these are board games that are worth making room for. Chaz, I like puns. You know that. So when I tell you that that's terrible, I just want you to know that it's not because it's a pun. It's just, it's just because it's terrible. I don't know. Uh, Aunt Chelsea's game list and taxidermy live stream. Yeah, Chaz, as perfectly as that totally nails it, I think I'm just going to keep on working on it. In the meantime, the next game on this month's list is Crescent City Cargo from Spielworks, in which players take on the role of competing logistics companies, vying to fulfill lucrative contracts with domestic railways, foreign cargo ships, and future speculated trade opportunities through shipping containers waiting to be transported to and from New Orleans. Players receive goods from a warehouse and use them to improve the state of their company or earn valuable capital that will serve to establish their dominance in the local trade market. And yeah, logistics might not sound like the most adventurous thing in the whole world, but the game can actually become quite cutthroat and tactical as others vie to grab the best contracts before you can. Winning the game will require manipulating the market, completing your goals and rising above to stand atop the competition as the most profitable company. It's that surprising twist that got Crescent City Cargo a spot on this month's Aunt Chelsea's game list and taxidermy livestream. Nope. I thought if I said it with enough conviction that it would feel real, I'd have to think of something else. Like, what's the opposite to an underdog anyway? Like an overcat? Sounds more like something you would see on Chelsea's taxidermy livestream. Whatever you call it, the next game on this month's list is Aliens Bug Hunt, based on the Alien movie franchise from Upper Deck Entertainment. In Alien Bug Hunt, the challenge is to complete the various missions you've been assigned while clearing out structures and complexes from the heartless, relentless and hungry xenomorphs that are infesting them. Players can pick from their favourite characters from the Alien movies, each of whom offers a unique ability that is the key to survival. Every role is critical as players rely on each other to make it out alive. The board is comprised of 30 different location tiles, creating a variety of different challenges to overcome. Private Hudson might ask if this is a stand-up fight or just another bug hunt, but the real question is, who's hunting who? Alright, this is the perfect example of what I'm saying. How can a game based on the massively popular Aliens IP be considered an underdog? It sends, it sends the wrong message. I need to buy myself some more time so I can go back to the drawing board. Rodney? Rodney Smith, are you around? Yes, Matthew, I'm here. I'm here, I just got in. No one picked me up from oboe practice. I had to take the bus. The bus had to swerve to avoid hitting a moose. We hit a tree, I had to get out and walk, and then it rained the whole way here. Yeah, fascinating, Rodney. Could you cover our second sponsor while I go find a solution to something? I'd love to. This episode is made possible in part by Whistle Mountain from Bezier Games. Whistle Mountain is a unique tile laying worker placement and resource management game for two to four players. Its design gives a nod to Scott Caputo's previous game, Whistle Stop, which has similar artwork and themes, but ventures into a new world of technology and mechanisms. As players collect resources with the assistance of blimps, dreadnoughts, and hot air balloons, their workers diligently build scaffolds, machines, and upgrade the special abilities they've developed. The evolving game board itself also creates ever-changing options as the game progresses. 
So with the help of your airship fleet, protect your workers from the ever-threatening floodwaters by keeping them a step ahead of the melting snow and rising waves. Whistle Mountain is now available at your friendly local game store, Amazon, and BezierGames.com. So follow the link in this video's description for more information about the game and where you can find it. So Matthew, you called out to me, was there anything else I could help you with? Actually, yeah, I'm trying to come up with a new name for the show that's more accurate rather than underdogs. Oh, well, improving the titles of our shows is my personal specialty. Just give me a minute, Matthew. I'll come up with something. Okay, in the meantime, let's talk about the next game on our list, Unforgiven from Greenfeet Games. Unforgiven, The Lincoln Assassination Trial is a two-player game taking place during the 1865 trial of the first woman, Mary Surratt, ever to be executed for treason by the United States. So yeah, that old theme. The game begins amidst the chaos of Lincoln's assassination as the United States still struggles to heal over the wreckage of the American Civil War. Each player takes a side in the trial and works to persuade the jury to either convict or acquit the accused and thereby win the game. Players will draft and play cards which will help them strengthen their case with the jurors and recruit them to their side. They will also search to find the evidence to convince a nine panel jury that Mary Surratt, one of eight people put on trial for conspiring to assassinate President Lincoln and other members of his cabinet is innocent or guilty. Yeah, so he shot Lincoln, then he took it off out of the city. He made it to the only bridge that, that he'd get out of and he was gone. Then he ended up in this priest's barn, but then they burnt the barn down but we don't know what happened to him. One soldier says they shot him, even though he was told not to shoot him. It's a whole thing. Yeah, no fascinating, Matthew. Now, if you're ready, I know exactly what to change the name of this series to. Whatever it is, it can't be worse than what Chaz came up with. Let's call it The Climbers. Isn't that the exact same title you've been lobbying Chaz to change Momenten to? Yes, but his lack of vision prevents him from seeing the potential of The Climbers in the way that I'm sure you do. Rodney, I don't think it does. Oh, 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 wait a minute. He's not trying to force the climbers onto you too, is he? Oh, now you come back when I'm this close to getting Matthew to get the name of the show right. Yeah, to be fair, I haven't Matthew, even... Matthew, don't let him strong arm you into using the climbers. Interesting how you weren't able to pick me up from practice, but you show up for this. No, look, I'll prove the climbers works by presenting the next game on our list, Switch and Signal from Cosmos. In this cooperative challenge, Players work together to efficiently and effectively transport goods to their destinations without wasting time. The game's journeys will take players across Europe, the United States, and Canada. And while things start pretty relaxed at first, the more trains put on the game board, the tighter the schedule becomes. So diligently chart your course, visit cities, cross grasslands, and climb up mountain passes in the game that's climbing our list of climbing climbers in this freshly retitled video, The Climbers, which this month includes Switch and Signal, published by The Climbers. Published by Cosmos. Yeah, I think it might be time for both of you to get packing, which brings me on to the next game on this list, 2018's Get Packing. Get Packing is a puzzle game with a simple goal. Be the fastest to pack a suitcase full of several haphazardly shaped items in such a way that you can close your suitcase correctly. Get Packing contains four suitcases, 52 plastic items of various shapes to pack, and 30 illustrated cards featuring the items to use in various puzzles, which are available in several increasingly challenging difficulty levels. Get Packing was first published in 2018. That, in addition to being a game that can be seen as having an objectively high toy factor, could definitely cause it to go overlooked. Which is a shame because this is a game that we definitely don't want to go overlooked. I got it. Games we simply can't overlook. Brilliant, that's what this list is all about. Games we simply can't overlook. I'm a genius. Okay, I just need someone to test it out on just to see how it sounds, but I think I know just the person. Here's Paula with the next game that we couldn't overlook. Thanks, Matthew. There was indeed a game that I almost overlooked this month, but not for the reason you may think. The upcoming Bios Mesofauna, designed by Phil Eklund, is a brand new version of 2017's prehistoric territory building game Bios Megafauna, which in turn was an evolution of its predecessor, Bios Genesis, from 2016. Okay, I'll be honest, I am confused. 
Bios mesofauna follows the same octobon environment as Bios megafauna, sporting mechanisms for climate change, similar meeples, same tiles, same card colors, same victory points, same cratons and drift, same basic and octobon games, same catastrophes to overcome, same greenhouse, cloudiness, terrestrial settings, and they both feature oxygen resources. It kind of sounds like they're identical. Ah, ha! But that's where you'd be wrong, because Bios mesofauna is designed to streamline the gameplay introduced in Bios megafauna, stripping away about half the rules. Do you have any specifics on what's been removed? Well, a number of things have been removed. Uh, monsters are out, as are tools, uh, horror plants, Kiwi, Hossatorium, Dark Heart, Mars, Venus, Shelves, Blooms, Offshore, and the Cheshire Cat have all been dropped. Holy crocanoli! That's quite a Marine list. Marine variant in size were also dropped. And all the animals are smaller, like they're all insect-sized. And that's why I almost overlooked it this month. Insects are very small and easy to accidentally overlook. That's true. But that's not exactly what I meant by games that we can't overlook. What's more, Bios mesofauna and Bios megafauna can be integrated together, making it possible to play a game with a combination of player roles from both. Thanks, Paula. I appreciate your help, even with a fundamental misunderstanding of the concept I'm trying to convey. Let's move on. Continuing the list of games featuring an array of arthropods is Kabuto Sumo, an upcoming game from BoardGameTables.com. In Kabuto Sumo, players are beetles battling for supremacy in the insect wrestling ring, fighting to take their place in the pantheon of legendary wrestlers. The gameplay of Kabuto Sumo resembles the coin pusher arcade games in which quarters, or we use two Ps, not important, but they're strategically dropped into the play area in anticipation for the cascading coins of the platform. This game features a similar experience with players strategically sliding pieces onto the board in order to push the other players out of the ring. And it's an interesting combination of dexterity, strategy, bugs and luck. Kabuto Sumo recently completed its Kickstarter campaign, financing it to go into production with an estimated delivery time of June 2021, setting the stage for the World Insect Wrestling Championship. And there you go. Our list of games we wanted to be sure didn't go overlooked this month. Thanks for watching, and until next time, I've been Matthew Jude, and take care.